and welcome back to my channel for another edition of news time and today we are going through all the images that were taken and shared by jay patel during the recent gamma trade show that happened a few days ago and i'm so excited to go through these images with you so thanks jay for actually taking these pictures and what we have over here firstly is the hero clicks iconics batman and robin set as we can see this is the batman slapping robin meme and I really love the attention to detail because as you can see on Robin's left cheek, he has the Batman handprint slap on his face. And not too much is known about the Dao because the Dao has not been revealed to us yet. But we can see that Robin has the Batman and Wildcard team ability. He's also at 45 points. While Batman, um, we can't see his point values, but it seems that he has a silver ring on top of his Dao, making him a unique figure. So I'm really interested to know what these two figures do and if they're dependent on each other. And moving on to the next Iconics box set, here we have is the Nightfall, which is the one that I am looking forward to the most. We've already seen Batman and Bane doing our previous news video and I'm so happy that this version of Azrael is Batman Azrael, where you can see he has the gold, yellow armor, and the cape that they've done is so amazing. I really like how they actually sculpted this figure. I, I will rate this box set a 5 out of 5, and I may even want to get myself another box just so that I can leave it in display and one more box for me to use these figures. So we do not know uh, what these figures do. There were some images that were shared by Jay. However, the powers, the traits, all of the DAOs have been censored for the time being. So I'm really looking forward. I hope this Bane will be a monster Bane besides being the intelligent Bane so he can do outwit, he can outsmart your opponent and still wreck them and break them. I'm really looking forward to this box set and what it brings. But I do recall that this Azrael is also very special because he has the Batman family and Gotham Underworld keywords. He also has the Batman ally team ability and the Batman enemy team ability. So you can see him being used in the Batman family teams as well as his rogues gallery. And I'm really looking forward to all three downs for this box set. And for our next Iconics box set, here we have his Thanos making his snap where he removes half of the universe. We can't really see his Dao, but from what I can tell over here, he's also a unit figure with six range and double targets. I do believe his special power on the left, uh, where we can see the card, is that he can choose a power every turn to use. He also has a couple of clicks of sidestep. Penetrating Blast and Invincible, though we don't really know what this figure does. We can see from the artwork that the way they designed the card is unique to this character. So this is a Thanos version that you may want to seek for if you're a huge fan of Thanos, especially it's such an iconic moment where he removes half of the universe for his lovely lady death. And here is our next Iconics box set, which is the Captive Hearts Wolverine, the sad emo Wolverine who's lying in bed, looking at a picture of Jean Grey and Scott Summers feeling sad. And let's take a look at his character cards because we actually do have character cards for this figure. Here we have Wolverine with the X-Men team ability, Alpha Flight and Weapon X and X-Men keywords. He has a trait, pining after Jean. When Wolverine starts the game, choose another friendly character to be his crush. At the end of your turn, if Wolverine's crush is within two squares, you may heal Wolverine two clicks. If Wolverine's crush is not within two squares, all other characters within two squares modify their damage by minus one. Modify their attack and damage by minus one. Now let's take a look at the back of the card because it's designed really, really gorgeous. It is the picture frame of where he was looking at Jean and Scott Summers, so you can actually replicate that scene where you hold this character card and lie on bed and take a look at the back of the card. Now, I mentioned the trait previously because it works so well with his special movement power, which is locked in his room, sidestep. Wolverine can only be targeted by characters within two squares. So you can't outwit him, you can't make a range attack against him until you're within two squares of Wolverine. And this actually works with the bottom half of his trait, all other characters within two squares modify their attack and damage by minus one. So if they're going to get close to maybe attempt to hit Wolverine, their attack and damage will be minus one. Wolverine also has another trait, which is RAR. Blades, Claws and Fangs, once per turn when Wolverine uses it, 
Before rolling, you may choose to increase the result by plus one for each character with the X-Men team ability in your KO area. This value increasing is not subjected to the plus one, uh, the plus three, minus three maximum limit, which I do believe is called the rule of three. Yep, it's not subjected to that. So you can actually maybe increase the damage value by plus six. You have a six characters with the X-Men team ability in your KO area. So I think this figure coming in at 45 points, he's really good. Somehow he has six movement and sidestep, even though he's lying on bit. I'm not sure why. And traded blades, claws, and fangs will actually help you maximize Wolverine's damage value. It starts with three and it ends off with a damage value of one. So you really want to use that blades, claws, fangs. And he also ends the bottom half of his style with precision strike. So that will help you against powers such as super senses or maybe even invincible or impervious where you do a minimum of one damage. He also has a full down of battle fury. So you can't carry this Wolverine around with your flyers or anything like that. This is an awesome figure only at 45 points and he's also unique. So you can't spam your team with Wolverines where Wolverine's crush will be Wolverine. I'm really looking forward to this figure where I'm going to choose my crush to be Apocalypse or Wolfie's crush is going to be Galactus or Thanos. Think about those. And yeah, such a great figure. Jay Patel had also managed to take images of the upcoming Monthly OB Kit sets. And first off, we're going to start with the Moon Knight OB Kit, which I do believe begins in June. Here we have Moon Knight with the Cosmic Energy Team ability coming in at a heavy 200 points. He has the Marvel Knights, Phoenix Force, Cosmic Deity, Detective, Mystical, and Warrior keywords. He has two traits, the first one being favored by Kong Shu. When Moon Knight case owes an opposing character, give him an avatar token if he doesn't already have one. When Moon Knight will be KO'd, you may remove an avatar token. If you do, instead turn him to click 4. So as we can see from this trait, he can't have more than one avatar token. So I think the whole plan is to quickly KO a character so they can get one avatar token. And he has an improved movement targeting. I do believe that is destroy blocking. Um, pardon me if I'm wrong. And let's take a look at his next trait, the Spells of Strange. Free, choose one to use until your next turn. Energy Shield Deflection, Combat Reflexes, or Barrier as free but only generate one marker. He also has a Movement Special which is Hypersonic Speed. When Moon Knight uses it, after resolutions, you may deal one penetrating damage to a character he moved through this action. So let's take a look at his dial. At 200 points, he only has 7 clicks, but he has a chance to come back if you do have one of these avatar tokens. So I think the whole idea is to quickly hypersonic in, try to kill the easiest character that you can, score some points, and with the hypersonic movement of 10, 12 attack, 19 defense, and 5 damage with probability control, penetrating plus, and invincible. I do believe it's quite hard to knock him off his first few clicks, especially he got that free action to choose maybe energy shield deflection or combat reflexes that will actually keep him alive quite uh, quite often. But even if you were to get KO'd, you still can bring him back on click 4. And maybe if you're at click 4, you kill another character, you can give him another avatar token. So I think the whole idea is to don't die, quickly KO as many characters and keep him alive because coming in at 200 points, he's taking so much, more than 50% of your point bill in a 300 points game. So you have to be really good at running these heavy one-man army tempo characters. Now, quite a few recent Avenger figures have been also at 200 points, such as the recent Spider-Man figure, the Iron Man and Hulk from the Avengers Forever set with all coming in at 200 points. Looking at all of them, I think Hawk and Moon Knight are my two favorite. So I'm looking forward to owning this figure as well and maybe give him a try. And now moving on to our next figure of this OP kit set, it's going to be Black Knight, who is the Avengers team ability, which has been recently updated. He's the Avengers, Defenders, Excalibur, Heroes for Hire, Mystical. I can't really see what's that keyword. And the last one is Warrior keyword. 
He also has this trait, Reckless Swordsman, Blade's Claws Fangs steal energy. When Black Knight makes an attack with a single target and misses after resolutions deal him and the target one unavoidable damage. This figure comes in at 60 points with a total of 7 clicks. Even if he were to miss his attacks, he still can deal one unavoidable damage that goes through powers like Invincible. So I think that's pretty interesting. He has 11 attack, charge, exploit weakness, and invulnerability to start off his style, and he ends off with flurry and a couple of clicks of um, close, close, combat uh, close combat reflexes and close combat expert too. So let's take a look at the back of the dial. He doesn't have any other special trait or special powers, but that's okay. Coming in at 60 points, I think he's well worth it. And now the last figure for this OP kit set, which is a brand new scalp. Uh, the ones that we saw earlier, Moon Knight and Black Knight over here are re -scalps. So this is a unique scout for the monthly OB kit, which is Harrow, who has the Brute and Scientist keyword. Control Test Subjects is his trait, which you can give him a power action to generate a Test Subject Bystander, maximum two on board, and this turn that character can use Autonomous. He also has a special defense power, which is Unethical Pain Research, Mastermind and Toughness. Total of four clicks at only 35 points. Let's see what the test subject do. And the test subject comes in with 6 movement, 10 attack, 17 defense, 2 damage with M power and charge. You can make this for a power action and they also gain autonomous. So if you were to give a power action to Harrow immediately, you got your autonomous bystanders that can charge and M power immediately on the same turn. He also has a special damage power, My Own Untouchable Soldiers. Free, choose an adjacent friendly character. That character can use Impervious until your next turn. So if you want to, you can always use this special damage power on your test subjects. You can give them Impervious, make them more sturdier. But I'm actually thinking of giving Impervious to characters in the scientists and maybe brute keywords that can really benefit from having impervious if they already have powers like safe change, super senses. Why not give them impervious and let them, you know, save themselves more damage? And yeah, so I think this fake is the the best fake of this True Figures uh, OP kit set. Only 35 points making his debut, Harrow. And yeah. And let's take a look at Search for Amut's Tomb, which is the keywords detective and mystical. The clue effect, when a friendly character with a listed keyword destroys one or more pieces of blocking terrain, after resolutions, gain one clue token. Now, if you have a total of four clue tokens, when a friendly character kills an opposing character, after resolutions, heal them one click. Okay, it's kind of like a simple version of steel energy, KO a character and heal one click, though you can use this uh, suspect um, four clue token power, even for range attacks. And now moving on to six clue tokens, which is the evidence when a friendly character deals damage to an opposing character occupying or adjacent to a debris marker, increase the damage dealt by one. So you're trying to destroy as many blocking terrains as possible. You're going to be making a ton of debris markers. And if your opposing characters are adjacent to them or, or occupying these debris markers, you increase your damage by plus one. And for the case close, with a total of 8 clue tokens, when a friendly character kills an opposing character, score 10 points. So whenever you want to kill a character, you, you're going to essentially score an additional 10 points. This even works for your opponent's bystanders who normally have 0 points, but now if you were to KO them, you score another 10 points. This is a very interesting um, mystery card, and if you were to use the detective and mystical keyword, and if you have some space in your sideline, why not just fit this in at the beginning of your uh, at the beginning of the turn? You can actually just start, you know, destroying blocking terrains that you see and you rank up some of these uh, clue tokens. Even if you were to get the suspect four, where you can heal one click after KO an opposing character, I think it's well worth it. Why not just gain it? And we also have the next monthly OB kit, which is the one for July, which is going to be the Fantastic Four OB kit. And we're going to start off with our very first character, which is Mr. Fantastic, who has the Fantastic Four team ability. He has the Fantastic Four Illuminati and Scientist keywords. He has a special attack power. Get over here for round two. 
power action range of 4, make a range attack. If Mr. Fantastic hits after resolution, place the hit character adjacent to Mr. Fantastic and make a close attack targeting that character. So it's kind of like an um, interesting version of a flurry where you make a range attack, you bring your opponent over, and maybe Mr. Fantastic can hit him one more time with a close attack. He's coming in at 50 points. He also has a special damage power, which is part of my plan. Outwit, and outwit as a power action. When Mr. Fantastic uses outwit as power, after resolutions, another friendly character may make a close attack targeting the chosen character if able. Okay, so uh, Outwit is a free action. You can do it as free, and now you can do it as a power action. And if you're to do that, you can maybe get your other friendly character to make another close attack. That's very interesting. Coming in at only 50 points at six clicks, I think my worry is that I feel that he should have been given the leadership trait or something like that. It would really help this figure out, but um, a figure definitely that I would like to collect. And moving on to our next figure that we have is going to be Human Torch Johnny Storm coming in at a heavy 90 points. Human Torch has the Fantastic Four team ability along with Fantastic Four and Celebrity keywords. He has a special movement power along with a trait which is building up to go Nova. When Human Torch hits, give him a flare token. Remove three flare tokens as a free action and if you do, deal two unavoidable damage to all characters within four squares, then destroy all blocking terrain within four squares. Let's take a look at the back of his card for the movement special, which is hypersonic speed. When Human Torch uses it and would make an attack, he may instead deal one damage to each opposing character. Now, I think the downside of this figure is that both his trait and his movement special does not work together. If you were to use this special movement powers, the attack wouldn't have been made at all, so you wouldn't have been able to gain these flare tokens. At 90 points, I, I don't really think it's good with both powers not being able to work together. Mm, maybe not, uh, even though he's shooting in at 12 attack and 4 damage at 90 points. It's a bit heavy. He doesn't do any penetrating blasts or anything like that. Next figure is going to be a unique sculpt, which is going to be Infinity Thing, with the Power Cosmic and the Fantastic Four team ability. Here's the Avengers, Fantastic Four, and Cosmic keywords. Here's a trait, Rally 4, um, that works for both friendly and opposing. Infinity Thing begins the game on click 2. Remove four of Infinity Tokens, oh sorry, remove four of Infinity Thing's Rally dice. If you do, turn him to click 1. Okay. And he has a special attack power. Now it's time for the now it's time of the clumbering. He gains flight. He has pulse wave. When Infinity Thing uses it, friendly characters have safeguard pulse wave. So at 70 points, he also has a special defense power. The time is not here yet. Stop click. Infinity Thing can't be chosen for mastermind and can't be healed except by the Fantastic Four team ability. So if you take a look at his style, at 70 points, he has four stop clicks immediately. He can't be healed by any way except for the Fantastic Four team ability. But if you were to remove four of his rally dice, even if you are at click five, you go all the way to click one. So it's quite hard to kill him. But at 70 points, if you do not gain these rally dice fast enough, you're stuck with a eight movement, 11 attack, incapacitate with the defense special, which is good, but it's only a one damage prop. So you really got to find a way to rack up these rally dice as soon as possible. If not, you're quite stuck with 70 points. Even though he's so sturdy, hard to KO, he might not be doing too much during the game. Uh, interesting figure. He's also unique. I do believe that there's going to be ways to gain rally dice. And this figure is definitely going to be very powerful if you to play a multiplayer game where you increase the chances of gaining these rally dice. This kit also gives you the first legacy legacy character that we have over here, which is Invisible Woman. Now, this character has already received a legacy card. It's actually one of the first characters to receive a legacy card back in the Future Foundation set. The legacy card was, you know, pretty okay it was still quite costly for a figure to be used but i love that they actually went back to make a new legacy card because back then when they did it i do believe it was their first time they didn't want to 
go so far and and push the envelope and make it broken. So here we have Sue Storm receiving a second legacy card coming in at 50 points with a trade shields up. Power action, if no friendly character has a shield token, give a friendly character within range and line of fire a shield token so she can actually give it to herself. When a friendly character with invisible woman's shield token would take a damage from an attack, instead remove the shield token and deal that character one unavoidable damage. This is pretty cool. You can give it to maybe one of your main attackers, such as uh, with the celebrity keyword, I'm thinking of Sakarian Iron Man. And uh, as you can tell, I really love to play team teams, even though the team team probability control is no longer around. So you can give the shield token to the Sakarian Iron Man, send him all the way up. The first attack he receives will now only deal him one unavoidable damage. You don't have to remove one of your object tokens from his character card. So interesting, coming in at 50 points, he also has a attack special and a damage special that we're going to take a look. So just a little blow to the head, which is precision strike, telekinesis. When Sue hits after resolution, give each hit character an action token. So, you know, it feels like a incapacitate uh, after dealing damage from the precision strike. And also as the damage special, not even close to where I am, shape change when Invisible Woman uses it and succeeds after resolutions, you may move her up to two squares. Two interesting uh, special powers that we have over here, though she does not open with either of them, which I think is fine. Coming at 50 points, you have telekinesis and probability control, which is a very important power right now, especially with the loss of team probability control. So at 50 points, I think she's pretty worth it, though I do hope that the shield uh, token removal would occur when you choose so and not for the very first attack because your opponent can just maybe deal one random damage just to remove the shield token and deal the character one unavoidable damage. But at 50 points, I think she's pretty worth it. And that is the monthly OP kit for the Fantastic Four set. And now we're going to take a look at a couple of pictures. There are no more new DAOs that we can go through. Uh, beginning in 2024, there are going to be two brand new starters, which is the Marvel starter and the DC starter. As you can see from the box art over here for the Marvel starter, we got Spider-Man, Black Panther, Captain Marvel and Iron Man. While the DC starter has the Trinity, which is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, as well as Harley Quinn, who maybe joins the Justice League. Uh, she's really popular, so it's very nice to see her joining up with the Trinity. And let's take a look at the next one. Here are the 3D renders for the scalps that we have for these starter sets. Now, I do recall that they made an announcement last year that these starter sets are going to be less than 40 US dollars. So I do hope it maintains at this low price point so it'll be easy for new players to get into this game. And I, as we can see, the scalps look so cool. They look like your iconic figure level of scalps. I think it really looks nice, especially Spider-Man who's taking a selfie. And this is a great way to introduce new players to hero clicks. And I'm really looking forward to see what these DAOs do. I'm sure to pick up one of these starters up myself so that I can teach new players for this wonderful game. And let's take a look at the next slide. Here is the poster, clearer images of the 3D renders for these figures. And based on this picture, we can see that the start is going to include a map, maybe a couple of action tokens, barrier tokens, and a pair of dice as well. So you got everything to actually start this wonderful game of hero clicks. These four scouts look amazing. And as mentioned, the Spider-Man, I think it looks so cool. Very nicely done. He's, you know, crouching, maybe on top of a building, taking a selfie for J. Jonah Jameson, perhaps to send it to Daily Bugle. And here is the DC starter, which has the Trinity, like the same combination. We got a map, maybe a couple of tokens, as well as a pair of Batman dice. As we can see, these scalps look gorgeous. I think Wonder Woman looks really cool. You can see her holding the shield, you know, using the lasso of truth. And she also has a cape as well. And we got Batman who's about to use his grapple gun and Superman coming down to punch his opponents. I think these new starter sets look amazing. These 2024 starter sets are something that I'm sure to pick up as well.
And moving on, going on to our next set is going to be the Avengers 60th anniversary that will be released in June. I do believe the unboxing videos by Scott Porter will be released next month. So I'm really looking forward to that. And if you were to be playing at the Hero Clicks for Huntington's event, you can actually start playing this as a sealed tournament set. And I do believe one of the prizes that you can actually win is a brick of Avengers 60th. So you can get your hands on this product way ahead of everyone else and here's the uh, couple of images that we have for this set as we can see we got paul wielding mjolnir about to strike down his opponent we got captain marvel with a normal classic pose staring into the distance and we've also got this amazing doom scalp which is also found at the back of this booster box for the avenger 60th anniversary so it makes me think that this is going to be the chase set which is going to be a doom chase if I recall correctly, there's also going to be an Ultra Chase in this set as well. So, you know, I hope this Doom is not going to be the Ultra Chase because the scalp looks so good. I do wish to own one as well. And our next Heroclix set release that is going to be after Wheels of Ventures, if I'm not wrong, is going to be Marvel Studios. Disney Plus is going to return back with the next phase. And let's take a look at some of the scalps that they previewed. We've got Moon Knight dressed up in this tuxedo. We've got She-Hulk. We've got Lucky the Pizza Dog. And we also got the Avatar Kong Shu. This is so cool because I'm a huge fan of these Disney Plus TV series. As I mentioned in my previous news video, I've actually collected the whole Disney Plus set. It's one of my favorite sets that I own. I love using Scarlet Witch. I love using Ultron Infinity as my mission points character. This set is filled with so many of my favorite characters and to see them getting a second set, which is called Nick Space. I'm really looking forward to this set and I may just make the attempt to complete this whole set as well. So this next phase, I do believe it's going to maybe consist of four TV shows. So the first Disney Plus set had WandaVision, it had Captain America and, uh, sorry, Falcon and Winter Soldier. It also had Loki and What If. So if they were to follow this schedule of four TV shows, this one is going to have Moon Knight, it's going to have Hawkeye, it's going to have She-Hulk, and I believe the fourth one will be Miss Marvel. I do hope that they will expand slightly further as well and maybe include the Werewolf by Night TV show as well. It's one single episode, but uh, I think Elsa Blood Moon and the Werewolf are two figures that I really wish to collect as well. So I do hope those uh, that TV episode is also going to appear in this Marvel Studio set. And if they were to be nice enough, there are quite a few characters that were missing out from the previous Disney Plus set, such as the Power um, Harley. I, I can't really remember the character's name, but it was the villain that was in the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series. Um, Carly, I, I think her name was Carly, though I can't remember her superpower name. She's one of those uh, super soldiers uh, for that for the TV series. So I do hope that maybe they were to give us some of those characters that were missing during the previous Disney Plus set as well. But that's not the only Marvel Studios thing that is going to be released. We are also going to get the Guardians of Galaxy Holiday Calendar, where we can see we got Groot as a Christmas tree and Drax Batista doing a Randy Orton pose with his arms in the air. I heard that this is going to be a 12-figure box set. That would be quite cool because it's the 12 days of Christmas. Maybe you can open and play one of these figures for every single day of Christmas. This looks so cool. If you have not watched the holiday special, I highly recommend to watch it before the release of the next Guardians movie, which is going to happen next week as well. So next week is going to be jam-packed. We're going to have the Avengers 60th YouTube videos by Scott Porter. It's going to be Hero Clicks for Huntington's, as well as the release of Guardians of Galaxy Volume 3. And here's another image that I found, which is the Heroclix Notorious box art. And we can see Lex Luthor, we got Bizarro, we got Captain Cole. I do believe that is Sinestro's hand as well. We got, I think, Two-Face and Riddler hidden all the way at the bottom of the image. This looks like the artwork from Forever Evil, which is one of the last DC stories that I personally collected as comic books in hard copy. I'm really looking forward to this set. And looking at the release schedule, I hope these boosters are available during the September Worlds Tournament, though the dates haven't been officially, officially confirmed yet. I do believe this is the set that you get to play Battle Royales at. 
and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone else at the World Championship as well. And now we are at the last section of our video where we're going to take a look at the action figure insider article. I have the link in the description box below. So if you do have the time, give it a read because it's concerning the Wheels of Vengeance set that will be releasing in October, just in time for Halloween. And let's take a look at what are the key points from this article itself. Um, these boosters are going to be three regular figures and one oversized figure, which is probably going to be these peanut based figures. We're going to see characters such as the Headless Horseman. We're going to see Vampire, Vampire Hunters, Mummies, Mysticism, and these motorcycle characters. So if you're a huge fan for Ghost Rider, you definitely want to get this set. I'm looking forward to this. Really, really cool. And on top of that, we also got a hint of the gameplay mechanics where we were going to have the return of this trade time to get off the bike that we saw in the Black Widow movie set. When you were to KO Black Widow, you can actually bring another version of her from your sideline to continue the battle. So it's interesting to see this mechanic returning in some form for this set, which makes me believe if we were to KO this Ghost Rider that we have over here, you can bring in another Ghost Rider to continue and wreak havoc. We're also going to see a new mechanic which is regarding special smoke cloud terrains that can deal anyone damage if you were to stay in it for too long, which kind of reminds me of those uh, scarecrow smoke cloud where you deal poison damage through the smoke cloud itself. So quite interesting to see these new, new two mechanics that are going to be in Wheels of Vengeance. The set is also going to have more than 60 figures to collect. And there are also going to be glow in the dark features for some of the characters. You can see Damien Hellstorm. Well, the scalp doesn't have any paint work itself, but if he were to be in the dark, he, his whole figure will be glowing. And we can see Ghost Rider over here. Same way, the flames are going to be glow in the dark feature. And we have Moon Knight over here where his hands are charging up. It's also glow in the dark. So I think this is a really cool aspect, though it doesn't impact the game in any way. If you were to done playing these figures, you can actually display them. And at night time, you can really see the glow in the dark effects. As a huge fan of glow in the dark, um, glow in the dark toys. Uh, I'm looking forward to this and I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you could give me a like, share and subscribe. It only takes a little bit of effort to, you know, click the subscribe button and to click the like button. I really appreciate it. So I hope to see you in the next one.